All honeybees communicate using pheromones. A pheromone is a chemical message that results in changing behavior from one animal to another of the same species. There are two types of pheromones. There's a releaser pheromone, which creates instant change in behavior, and a primer pheromone, which is slow acting. Physiological changes, then behavioral changes. Let's start with fanning, since it plays a major part in how bees communicate. Honeybees fan to ventilate the hive. They also fan to spread pheromone odors to other bees. This is done by planting its feet firmly and flapping its wings repeatedly. The nasonove gland is located on the dorsal tip of the worker bee's abdomen, as shown here. This gland releases the nasonove pheromone, which is used for guidance and direction. In this picture, you can see two bees fanning. The bee on the right is exposing the nasonove gland, as where the bee on the left is not. Can you see the open nasonove gland? When honeybees swarm to find a new home, the nasonove gland keeps the bees grouped together and organized. Once a new nesting site is reached, worker bees will raise their abdomens in the air and expose the nasonove gland and begin fanning. The fanning will disperse the pheromone amongst the bees, keeping them grouped together, letting the others know this is home. If you look closely, you'll see several bees with their butts in the air fanning. Most likely, they have the nasonove gland exposed. They will also do this fanning behavior at established hives for young foraging bees in an effort to direct them back to their hive. Notice all the bees around the entrance on this hive. The footprint pheromone is left behind by worker bees as they walk. It's commonly found on the entrance of the hive and on flowers the bees are foraging. This pheromone attracts worker bees and stimulates them. Bees can often be seen fanning this pheromone for incoming foragers. Homecoming bees from the field pick up on this odor as they approach the hive and it helps guide them back home. At the present time, researchers believe the chemical is secreted by the bee's feet, possibly the tarsal glands, but it could be a mixture of glands that make up this pheromone. Now the queen's footprint pheromone has been found to come from the tarsal glands on her feet. As she walks around on the comb, they leave an oily substance behind, sort of a chemical message for all the other bees. This prevents queen cell construction along with swarming. Now as the population grows in the hive, the queen is unable to, to deposit these footprint pheromones on all the surfaces of the comb. The workers are then convinced a new queen is needed and start to construct queen cells. This is usually more noticed on the outer edges of the brood comb. As the queen ages, these pheromones get weaker, which also triggers queen cell construction. Here you can see a queen cell that the bees constructed. On this frame you can see several of them. We all know foraging bees collect nectar from flowers. But what you probably didn't realize is that they produce a foraging pheromone. This pheromone is added to the nectar before they get back to the hive. Once they return to the hive, the nectar is fed to house bees. This chemical message in the nectar helps to keep the ratio between nurse bees and foraging bees in balance by slowing the maturing rate of the nurse bees. The alarm pheromone is for the colony's defense, and it works in two stages. The first stage is more for defending the hive against robbing bees, and this pheromone comes from the mandibular gland on the honeybee's jaw, as you can see here in this picture. 
The pheromone released acts as a repellent. Humans cannot pick up on this scent. Usually the first thing we may notice before getting stung is the bee constantly flying around you, as if to say, I'm warning you. This is where the second part comes into play. Once the bee's warning is overlooked, she stings you. The honeybee stinger is barbed. So once she stings you and pulls away, her stinger is pulled out, entrails and all. At this point, the affected area has full alarm pheromones covering it. This acts as a target for the defending bees that are coming at you. The more you are stung, the stronger the scent you put off. This is why once you are stung, there is instantly other bees coming after you. Beekeepers will sometimes smoke the stung area to mask this pheromone. The removal of the stinger from the bee kills her within a few minutes. If a honeybee stings another bee, the stinger does not pull out, so she lives to fight another day. 